Welcome to The Hump. This week we'll be discussing breakdowns. Welcome to The Hump. This week on the panel with me are Meg, Sophie and Jason. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Now today we're talking breakdowns and I'm sure we've all been a part of a few of these. And one of the most dangerous sorts is a communication breakdown. Now Roderick, I know that you would have been a part of a few of these in your lifetime. <laughs> just, just share one. <laughs> yeah, communication breakdowns is a big problem in the middle of a production, mm. of any production, whether it's a corporate event or a concert. It's where people stop talking to each other yep. or sending the wrong messages across. That's where things get really out of control very mm. quickly. Um, and sometimes that can have disastrous results. You know, mm. you, there, there was a big communication breakdown um, at the Love Parade disaster in Germany um, four years ago. 21 people died. Yeah. And was that was so just because yeah. of not people not talking to each other. So mm. the police not talking to the security, not talking to the crowd managers. Um, and yes, you see it everywhere. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, comms are an incredibly important part mm. of every major event. And um, I've been writing a little bit about some of the more, you know, the bigger opening ceremonies of like things like uh, the European Games. Yeah. And uh, even, I mean, I always knew there was a lot of comms on these events because I've, I've worked on things like them, but the actual numbers of people on comms now is staggering. In a well-run event, you're yeah. talking about hundreds and hundreds yeah. and hundreds of people all across multiple platforms and channels and wireless. And it's just mm. staggering how many people are actually listening into a show call to make mm. sure everything goes smoothly. Because yeah. when budgets are cut, I mm. sometimes feel like some of those people that see as, well, is that job essential mm. to, to make the show run? Maybe that's mm. where it could cut. But by cutting that mm. could be your lifeline you know that could be the thing that, that breaks mm. breaks down communication mm. yeah. I find that um, communication with my sons they like text messaging and and I see that um, all the, the youth like to text rather than actually talk to each other <laughs> and I know that just recently my younger son and I I was quite prickly with him because of the responses I was getting back to an invitation to my place for dinner <laughs> and it was like you just don't want to come to my place and at the end of the day it was like oh no I just didn't want to something something it's like pick up the phone <laughs> I couldn't I was sneaky texting at work but yeah it was just it's those kind of breakdowns where people misconstrue something that is black and white rather than having a face-to-face -face. Mm. but you know that's just a minor thing but when you're coming to life threatening situations where mm. there's yep. big crowds. I mean, mm. that's just, it's just got to happen. Mm. Yeah. Some people just don't want to talk because of what they're scared of, yeah. you know, what the answer is going to be. Yeah, what I mean, that's scared another, of mm. Yeah, absolutely. But when it comes to public and mm. life things, jeepers. Like oh, just major events. There's got to be the mm. Oh, yeah, but you know, as Jason said, it's nowadays everybody is on comms because mm. you, you need to, to have that ability to quickly no, adapt to changes. If yeah. there's a, you know, somebody's running a little bit late, you need to let the right people know. Yep. So mm. you need to be able to talk to everyone instantly. Yep. Mm. I'm surprised at work how many different apps there are on, on my phone of where people and your different, how you can stay in touch with yeah. everyone or mm. WhatsApp and these different apps on. So you can just hear, and they're all like instant messenger, but you've got to be able to keep up to date with all yeah, these. Yeah, like who's on this one, who's on that one. Who's yeah, on that one? yeah, and yeah. different workplaces are all mm. on different ones. I mm. never assume that because they're on text mm. that you should send it by a Facebook messenger or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, my son mm. was saying, oh, who uses email these days? It's so old fashioned, mm. you know, should mm. Facebook messenger? It's like, honey, it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up the no, phone. Have you heard? E email is actually for old people now, apparently. So oh, okay. Yeah. I like times have changed. What right. E email is the fax of it is. the 21st century. So, so what does a phone call mean? Or face-to-face? -face? Does that not exert? Do we just 
face oh, to face. Oh, seriously, face to face. You don't want to say that. that. That's what you use Skype for, isn't it? Yeah, well, why are we <laughs> Skype, <here>? yes. <laughs> we're actually anyway. not. We're actually You're on the here? internet right now. <laughs> oh, that's okay. See, it's all very complicated. <laughs> anyway, we'll be, at, we'll be back after this. Back in the 1990s, there was a lot of talk about so-called intelligent lighting. So I thought, why not go further? So I created the world's first fleet of not just intelligent, but actively existential lighting fixtures. These were not just smart. They would philosophically question what they were doing and ponder if it was really worth doing it at all. The results were interesting to say the least. On being asked to provide a simple downstage wash, one fixture decided to fix a beam on an empty space upstage, effectively asking, what is missing here? Another was set to light the actors' faces, but chose to light the spaces between them to illustrate the yawning chasms that exist between us all. Inevitably, I came into the theater one morning and found the entire rig had disconnected itself and performed a full factory reset, unable to face yet another Wednesday matinee of Les Miserables. So sad. The Mackie DL32R is a powerful 32-channel digital mixer, completely controlled wirelessly from Mackie's intuitive Master Fader iPad app, freeing you to get in the mix like never before. The Master Fader control app is where everything happens. It's the most intuitive control app on the market, proven at more than 2 million live shows the world over. Download Master Fader for yourself to see it in action. Thanks for watching. Blackmagic Design have released the Blackmagic Duplicator 4K, which allows delivery of Ultra HD content to consumers by recording files onto inexpensive SD cards that can be distributed to customers the moment an event is finished. Featuring 25 built-in SD card recorders, multi-rate 12G SDI connections with loop-through output and RS-422 control, the Duplicator 4K encodes video using H.265 and saves files in an open file format onto standard SD cards. The built-in real-time H.265 hardware encoder gives customers Ultra HD video, even at high frame rates up to 2160p60. With H.265, Ultra HD content is not much larger in file size than an HD file would be in the older H.264 standard. Standard SD cards can be used for SD, HD and Ultra HD video and are compatible with Windows 10 computers. An unlimited amount of cards can be recorded by daisy chaining multiple duplicators together. The front panel controls include lock, record, append, stop and remote buttons and the unit is powered by a universal 110 to 240 volt AC power supply. Now, welcome back. And Sophie, we were talking about communication breakdowns mm. before and how they can be fatal. And in your case, they were nearly talked someone to death. Yes, yes. Well, what we thought was fatal actually wasn't fatal in that someone in our workplace who was, everyone knew this was a very well-loved man and he had gone to hospital and was very sick. Mm. But what we didn't know was that he came through and came out the other side because in the communication that everyone had through different means, Word got out, rumours, that um, he had died, he had passed away. Oh my away. gosh. Funeral preparations <gasps> had become <laughs> underway. So even his parents didn't know that he was alive. It, what? It, would, it was, they knew that he was sick in hospital. I think the parents knew, but it was through the workplace. It was terrible. So we all thought he was dead. 
And when you start getting text messages, because we were texting the family, you know, mm. sorry for your loss. I mean, how can you? Were you getting he, text backs that said what? he didn't. <laughs> he didn't text back. That's when the parents found out and they broke the rumors. Oh. Mm. That is it was just messy. It was, it, that's a bad communication that, breakdown. That's the worst. Right? I would yeah. have kept it going and turned up and stood up in the back with my fake glasses and the stash and go, right, what are they going to say about what me? If, at a funeral? <laughs> Who's turning go up? to your own funeral. <laughs> you, get out. <laughs> oh, I bet there's been a few. Imagine that. Oh, dear. Your that's own right. funeral. Awful. <laughs> well, that's, that's just going horribly wrong. Let's look at something that goes horribly right, hopefully, in Gearbox. Now, Julius, we are here with the two new powered offerings from JBL. We've got an SRX 835P three-way top box and an SRX uh, 818P uh, down the bottom, a, a single 18 sub. Uh, it's three-way, it's got a 15-inch woofer, it's got a five-inch uh, mid-range driver, which is the same one from the VTX 20 line array, and a three-inch compression driver with a 640, 60 by 40 dispersion angle. Now, first impressions of this particular JBL product, Julius. It's straight up and down meat and potatoes for me. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the same way. It is uh, very much JBL. You're in front of it, you're immediately got that familiar JBL sound, you know, uh, and all the things that come with that. Uh, it, uh, to me, to my ear, actually feels like a box that's going to be better with live music through it than playback, which is a good thing most of the time. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this week. Um, we survived this Vivaza breakdown. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye.